I think the Sons of Liberty are definitely um, soldiers of opportunity. They wanted freedom, they wanted an existence of their own. I think we were a match that lit a fire and um, exposed the rest of the colonies to the tyranny of the Crown and Parliament at the time. This will not happen to anyone in Boston ever again. We need more guns. If you're going on a revolution, you want Sam Adams on your right shoulder. He approaches things from a very straightforward, physical point of view, which is different from John Adams and how Hancock and maybe Franklin also would like to approach getting to the end post. Sam is our leader. He gives the speeches that get to your marrow and get you excited about what we're doing. But he's also a leader from the front as opposed to a leader from the back. It is my pleasure to welcome you all. I think John Hancock has the biggest character arc in terms of him being in a different place at the end than what it was at the beginning. He took my house. <laughs> of course he did. He becomes more than a man simply trying to get his possessions and his power back. We see him waking up to this extraordinary moment in history that he's absolutely involved in. Gage has the British Empire. An endless supply of weapons, trained soldiers, a navy. We need a better plan. I think John Adams is always sympathetic to the cause. It's just he's a man who's ruled by law. He was a leading man in his community, and people respected his opinions. John, this, this is hopeless. These men are cowards. They are, are... We need these men. We have to find another way of convincing them. John Adams was sort of the voice of reason. There was a visceral emotional attachment to the cause where he was able to step back and see the entire chessboard. So he was a good guide in terms of using the passion we're able to generate and directing it into something purposeful. Mr. Revere, I am John Hancock, and I would like to thank you for letting us use your workshop. Ah, now for what you're paying for, you could have had the place. Revere saw himself both as an artisan as well as a gentleman, which was a new idea uh, on class. He very much was an intelligence operator, and he could maneuver and operate amongst these different groups of people. This was a group of ordinary guys in all respects. We think of them as these mythological beings, but they were these guys that got together and ended up moving mountains, really. 